Hello everyone! Today we are going to cover the chapter 4 of International Strategic Management. We will talk about recognizing a firm's intellectual assets can be a company strategy by moving beyond a firm's tangible resources. One of the trends today is the emergence of the importance of the knowledge worker in today's economy. It is critical for managers to not only recognize the importance of top talent, but also the need to leverage or influence human capital in order to innovate and, in the end, to develop products and services that create value. This chapter is divided into four sections. The first section that we're going to discuss is uh, focuses on the increasing role of knowledge as the primary means of wealth in today's economy. The second section, we're going to address the key resource itself, the human capital, the foundation for the creation of intellectual capital. The third part is, let us discuss the critical role of social capital, that is the network of the relationships among individuals. And the last uh, part of this chapter is the role of technology in leveraging human capital. So this can range from such basic technologies as email uh, to more complex forms such as sophisticated knowledge management system. After this chapter, you should have a good understanding of why the management of knowledge professionals and knowledge itself are so critical in today's organization and also we are going to learn the importance of recognizing the interdependence of attracting developing and retaining human capital let us also give emphasis on the understanding of the key role of social capital in leveraging I keep on using leveraging, so leveraging means influence or control human capital within and across the firm. And I want you to learn also the importance of social networks in knowledge management in promoting career success and the vital role of technology in leveraging knowledge and human capital. Let us open the chapter in learning from mistakes. So if you have your book, you could read the case study of Dewey and Leboff LLP bankruptcy. So here we had a very successful low firms with a storied history, which failed due to a failed strategy and huge missteps with their human capital. At the core of the problem was the merger of two firms the insurance and the energy focus Levop Lom Green and Macri LPP and Dewey Balancing LPP. So these are the questions that we're going to ponder. Okay. Um how could these problems have been avoided at uh, Dewey and Leboff? What practices should firms such as Dewey and Leboff implement to attract and retain top talent? So in the video, you could see the merged partnership had promised new partners guaranteed lucrative contracts, sometimes over around like a $5 million a year. Not surprisingly, the legacy partners did not take kindly to such largesse and many left the firm. The firm's performance continued to suffer, in part the result of numerous failed mergers attempts and eventually the firm's liquidated. It became the largest law firm failure in American history and the Great Recession of 2008 and 2009 hit the firm hard and big problems came to the surface. Okay. So how could this problem have been avoided at Dewey and Leboff? Okay. At the end of the vignettes, it's made rather clear that the firm was run by a core administrators and lawyers who were not transparent in their action. In effect, there was an in-group and an out-group. Okay, so this led to the tremendous resentment when some of the legacy lawyers discovered that the compensation packages 
of the newly hired partners were much higher than theirs. And subsequently, when the Great Recession hit, there was clearly not a sense of shared sacrifice in order to help the firm weather the storm. Okay? And what practices should firms such as Dewey and Levot implement to attract and retain top uh, talent? Okay? Uh, Dewey and Levop LPP could have benefited by implementing more transparent and fair human resources practices and in both terms of the content as well as in processes which would make the practices more transparent and the firm was too far aggressive with its growth prospect fueled in part by its over optimism regarding with the future growth opportunities and given the insular nature of its decision, uh, the firm could have benefited by soliciting input from a wider variety of its partner instead of relying on those who were making decisions and resource allocations in a very opaque manner or not transparent uh, way of dealing the situation. Okay, now let's take a look in a uh, in a better perspective how intellectual capital can contribute to the success of the company operation or it could lead to the failure like what happened with the Dewey and Lebac. Okay? So we define intellectual capital as the difference between the market value of the firm and the book value of the firm. Okay, it, it, it includes the asset. Uh, such as reputation, employee loyalty and commitment, customer relationship, company values, brand names, and the experience and skills of employees. Take note, the market value of a firm is equal to the value of share of its common stocks uh, times the number of shares outstanding. And the book value of a firm is primarily on the measure of the tangible asset, okay, on the tangible asset alone. Okay, so it can be calculated by the formula like total asset minus total liabilities. That is the book value, okay. But for the market value, it includes intangible asset of the company. How do companies create value in the knowledge intensive economy? Okay, the general answer is to attract and leverage human capital, intangible assets, okay, uh, effectively through mechanisms that create products and services for value over time. In order to understand the central role of knowledge, we can see two aspects of it. One is human capital, which is the individual capabilities, knowledge, skills, and experience of companies, employees, and managers. Okay, so this knowledge is relevant to the task at hand, and it includes the ability to add this reservoir of knowledge, skills, and experience through learning the second aspect is the social capital which is the network of friendships and the working relationship between talented people both inside and outside the organization okay so relationships are critical in sharing and leveraging knowledge and in acquiring resources social capital can extend beyond the organizational boundaries to include relationships between the firm and its supplier, customers, and alliance partner. That's why it's very important to take care of our relationship with our employee. Okay, so knowledge management is critical for organization success. It includes explicit knowledge and tacit knowledge when you say tacit knowledge is about the minds of employees and it is based on their experience okay that is tacit for the explicit it's about um the codified documented and easily reproduced and widely uh distributed okay uh, distributed knowledge
Another issue in the central role of knowledge is the socially complex processes, okay? So this includes the leadership, the culture, and the, the trust, okay? So these processes uh, plays a central role in the creation of knowledge. They represent the glue that holds the organizations together and helps to create a working environment where individuals are more willing to share their ideas. So more, uh, more teamwork, the better relationships. So it creates products and services of value. I, I, my favorite uh, example is like the, the founder of uh, Marriott Hotel, okay? JD uh, Marriott, okay, he mentioned that if we make our employee happy, they are going to create a happy customer. That's why we have to ensure the good a good relationship with our employees. Okay, one by one, let us identify how uh, human capital and social capital could become a competitive advantage for our company's success. Okay? The World Bank Group ranks United States as the first in the world in employing workers. Why? Because American companies have a lot of freedom to hire and fire. Payroll taxes are relatively low by international standards and people are free to move to new jobs when the economy is better. Uh, Japan ranks 40th, okay, because a uh, lifetime tenure at many companies remains the norm and it is difficult to, to get a job except immediately after leaving school. And the uh, France, they are in the 155th position, okay, because of many labor contracts, severely limit hours and flexibility. I, they have a high payroll taxes and also uh, social policy makes layoffs very difficult. So what is the implication? A strong economy needs entrepreneurs to start companies and absorb new workers entering the labor market. And such risk takers do not appear in a vacuum. Such entrepreneurial activity flourishes typically only in the countries with business climates that are conducive to entrepreneurial airports. So let's take a look on the exhibit number 4.2, the human capital. There are three interdependent activities, the attracting human capital, developing human capital, and retaining human capital. The importance of talent organization success is hardly new. Organizations must attract talented people. Employees at all levels with the proper sets of skills and capabilities, coupled with the right values and attitudes. So we have to attract a human capital that have a set of skills and capabilities with the right values, okay? So if we have those kind of skills, we can develop, strengthen, and reinforce. And each employee must be motivated and his, his or her efforts focus on the organization's goal. And with that, if they are focused, this human capital can be retained, okay? Hiring is the only the first of three processes in which all successful organizations must engage to build and leverage their human capital. Firms must also develop employees to fill their full potential to maximize their joint contributions. Finally, the first two processes are for not if firms cannot provide the working environment and intrinsic and in extrinsic rewards to retain their best and brightest uh, potentials. Uh, let us explain further intrinsic rewards. It includes things such as personal achievements, 
professional growth, sense of pleasure and accomplishments. While extrinsic reward, okay, or motivation is based on tangible rewards. Okay, it is external to the individual and is typically offered by a supervisor or manager. Okay, like for example is gifts, bonuses, wage increase or salary raise, promotion, profit sharing, and a lot more. Okay, so that is intrinsic and uh, extrinsic reward. How could we able to attract human capital? Okay, the first step in building superior human capital is input control. Okay, human resource professionals argue that you have to hire for attitude and then later on train for skill because they believe that um, if they focus on employee mindsets and attitudes, okay, the task specific skills can be learned quickly more so you can use sound recruiting approaches and networking right uh job recruitment process process not be what we call man pulling it will be time consuming when we say man pulling you you interview and you collect applicants as many as as you want okay so it is only like for a sound recruiting approaches and networking. And the last one is you understand the value of millennials. Okay, so uh, you have to check nowadays the the potentials of the millennials. Uh, millennials are called the uh, millennial generation or the generation Y. Okay, and uh, this is the praise used to generally describe a person who reached adulthood in early 21st century. So they were born between 1980 and 2000. Okay, so I belong to a millennial uh, generation. Now you have the right talent. Okay, so what should be the next thing to do? Remember, it's not enough to hire top-level talent and expect that skills and capabilities of those employees remain current throughout the duration of their employment, okay? So, to retain and upgrade those kind of skills, they need training and development, okay? Mentoring is one of the traditional uh method okay or a viewed program to transfer knowledge okay as they say it could help uh recruit qualified managers decrease turnover and it could enhance diversity initiatives with senior level management okay and it could also facilitate organizational change efforts okay and also they are using traditional top-down appraisal system okay if you train them if you develop them you have to monitor okay, the process okay and they need to evaluate the software dimensions of communications and social skills like and also the values beliefs and the attitude okay you could also use a 360 degree evaluation and feedback system okay so the employee will be evaluated by superiors directly or uh, the, the direct uh, directors or the colleagues and even external and internal customer okay they rate the person's performance and employee must share knowledge and work together collectively to reach organizational goal. This evaluation system must ensure that the manager's success does not come at the cost of compromising the organization's core values. Leaders can either provide the work environment and incentives to keep productive employees and management from wanting to bail out. How are you going to retain your good employee, your competent employee? Retention mechanism okay, must prevent the transfer of valuable and sensitive information outside the 
organization. So you could see in the screen the top talent reasons okay, why they are not leaving uh, the company. Employees stayed in the company if they are being paid well, mentored, challenged, promoted, involved, appreciated, valued. If they are being given a mission, they are being empowered and they feel the sense of being interested. So in your book, if you can take a look and read the strategy spotlight 4, 4.2, some companies trying to increase employee retention using uh, data analytics to get a feel of uh, where management can make changes that will improve the chances that employees will remain enthusiastic about the company and ultimately stay there. Okay. How can we enhance human capital okay, by redefining our jobs and managing diversity? Okay. How they can do that? How, how they can uh, redefine job by investing in apprenticeship, transferring some tasks to lower level or outsourced people. Okay. That's why some company are hiring for uh, internship or on the job, okay, on the job, okay, because those uh, people who are in that position, apprentice, internship, OJT, okay, um, their salary is quite low or some of them are just receiving some allowance, okay. The company can create narrower and more focused job descriptions in areas where talent is, is scarce, if there will be some uh, needs to, to that position, okay? Company uh, can do the rewarding process for talent and knowledge management. So this can lower the cost and increase job satisfaction of the experts who remain, okay, in the company by promoting diverse workforce okay it could be able to improve an organization's effectiveness and competitive advantage through what uh, lowering the cost okay which firms effective in managing diversity will have a cost advantage by better reputation by marketing sensitivity to client culture, like uh, you, you, you trace their roots in other countries, okay, which brings to marketing efforts will be very useful. Then also by creativity through diversity of uh, perspective, less emphasis on the conformity to norms, okay? And it will uh, diversify your uh, your your level of creativity and better problem solving okay and greater organizational flexibility we're in uh, effective programs you're going to implement to enhance workforce diversity system that's why in every company they are doing a lot of trainings a lot of workshops they provide some uh travel incentives okay, that would enable the employees to be empowered. They are offering different way of working in the company like flex time and they are doing some field study, they are doing some lobbying that would give an employee an opportunity to be exposed in the, uh, the outside operation. Okay, now let's take a look on the social capital, the development of social capital. It is the friendship and working relationship among talented individuals. So it helps the knowledge workers to a given firm. Competitive advantages tend to be harder for competitors to copy if they are based on a unique bundles of resources. Okay? You cannot... Uh, break down a company who have a strong social relationship. So if employees are working effectively in teams, 
and sharing their knowledge and learning from each other not only um, will they be more likely to add value to the firm but they also will be less likely to leave the organization sometimes um, you are not working for the money sometimes you are staying in the company because you love uh, the companionship you love your teamwork you love the friendship that had been built in the company so let us emphasize that social comp capital is the friendship and a good working relationship among talented individuals okay so if there's a good interaction sharing and collaboration among them okay, it could develop firm specific ties with a higher probability of retaining key knowledge workers how social capital helps attract and retain talents okay so through hiring via personal or social networks okay some candidates may bring other talent with them okay so you could see here the pied piper effect okay and talent can immigrate from an organization to form a start off venture that's why um you could ask one employee to move to malaysia to open your new branch okay that could be and the last one is social network can provide a mechanism for obtaining resources and information from outside the organization social networks can link people ideas and resources that wouldn't normally be connected to each other okay by this means providing access to assets that can bring about important change in organizations okay company must have an analysis of pattern of social interactions for among individuals and we call it social network analysis it can help knowing what a group can do and contribute to the company it can also help configure or arrange group member social ties within and outside the group which affects the extent to which members connect to individual like who convey needed resources um, who exchange information and support to treat each other in positive ways develop trust and relationships to improve the group effectiveness remember developing social requires interdependence among group members that's why it is very important that you have a teamwork you rely to one another social capital erodes when people in the network become independent and increase interactions between members in the development and maintenance of mutual obligations in the social network so let's take let's take a look on the example in social network analysis in this diagram you could see the links are used to illustrate informal relationships among individual involving communication flows personal support and advice network so there may be some individuals with literally no linkages and that is fred so he isolate himself among uh, to the others okay and there are two primary types of mechanism to reach social capital flows the closure relationship and the bridging relationship okay uh, it is being described by bill prong george and susan where one member is central to the communication flows in a group and the bridging relationship represented by mary where one person bridges or brings together groups that would have otherwise been unconnected so mary connect okay the this three uh these four people to one another okay so both closure and bridging relationships have important implications for the effective flow of information in organizations and of course for the management of knowledge so 
Remember, closure relationship is the degree to which all members of the social network have relationships or uh, or ties with other group members. Okay, and for the bridging relationship, we're in the relationship in a uh, social network that can connect otherwise disconnected people, okay? So, employees with bridge uh, disconnected people tend to receive uh, timely, diverse information because of their access to a wide range of heterogeneous information flows. So, as you can see that um, in a company, we really have a close group, okay? We really have a close, close group, but of course, we need to build a bridging relationship we have to connect with the people who are disconnected to our network how about the effect of social networks to your career personally okay so what will be the contribution of this okay if employee will have an access with private information and public information relevant to the company work or company operation they will be motivated to work for they will be given a recognition as stakeholders okay it's it, it's like uh you feel that um i really belong because i was informed i know what's happening inside and outside our company but of course it should only have the relationship with the achieving of companies goals and objectives remember Success is also tied to the ability to transcend natural skill limitations through others. Okay? Training information of skills, rather, or skills of, of people whose experience differ from your own provides you with unique, exceptionally valuable resources. So it's more on knowing what others can do why they are good in this particular aspect of their skill so you can imitate them then you can improve yourself okay, better on the existing traits that makes them competitive okay so you can also gain power by being a network broker or someone who bridge multiple networkers or networks However, sometimes having a good or having a lot of friends or circle of friends have some uh, negative impact, okay? So first is the tendency in an organization for individuals not to question shared beliefs and we call it group thing. You just bow, okay? you just say, ne, ne, alachi, okay, kore, okay? with whatever the company is going to say. Group think may occur in networks with high levels of closure where there is little input from people outside of the network. So if there are deep rooted mindset, there could be a tendency to develop this functional human resource practices and that is the second negative impact. If the organization could continue to hire, reward and promote like-minded people who tend to further intensify organizational inertia or inactivity they're not going to have their own uh, discretion or own decision they're just going to say yes and yes so whatever the company is going to tell them so and it will erode it will take away it will wear away their innovation third is that Socialization process such as orientation and training can be more expensive in terms of both financial resources and managerial commitment because you always have to satisfy them so that they could, uh, they, they're going to, to follow. And lastly, a cost-benefit analysis is encouraged. Individuals may also use the contracts they develop to pursue their own interests and agendas in a way that may be inconsistent with the organization's goals and objectives. So they might engage in unethical or illegal 
act. So there will be a distortion of information. Okay, now let's move on with how technology can leverage or influence human capital and social knowledge. Sharing knowledge and information throughout the organization can be a means of conserving resources, developing products and services, and creating new opportunities. Technology can be used to leverage also human capital and knowledge within organizations as well as with customers and suppliers beyond their boundaries and it can retain knowledge like saving uh, tacit knowledge and motivating people to contribute their ideas by the use of network okay sharing of information will become effective like email okay e email is the effective means of communicating a wide variety of information messenger uh kakao talk Okay, so it is quick, easy, and almost costless. However, it can be excessive and embarrassing if one is not careful. Sometimes there are some videos and messages that are un, not appropriate that were being uh, like not purposely being sent to the other uh, uh, employee. So you have to be very careful with that. Okay, and using of electronic teams which is a team of individuals okay that completes tasks primarily through email communication okay, however uh, such teams requires a member who can identify those among them with the most appropriate knowledge and resources and members need to know how to combine individual contributions in the most effective manner for uh, uh for coordinated and appropriate uh, response okay so in this question which of the following is not an advantage of electronic teams or e teams a uh, they can facilitate communication b they can have the potential to acquire the a broader range of human capital C, they can be effective in generating social capital, or D, they're less flexible in corresponding to an anticipated work challenges. What do you think is the answer? The not uh, the advantage of E team. The answer is D. If E leaders and team members do not know how to combine individual contributions. In the most effective manner, they will not be able to create a coordinated, appropriate response. Technology can codify knowledge, okay, where its shared experience can be document, documented. So, what is a tacit knowledge? It is embedded in personal experience and shared only with the consent and participation of the in, uh, individual so it's like pattern recognition perceptual discrimination uh, judging typicality mental models and mindsets for the explicit knowledge okay so these are the declarative information the rules and the procedures these are the knowledge that can be documented widely distributed and easily replicated but one of the challenges of knowledge intensive organization is to what capture and codify the knowledge and experience that in effect resides in the heads of its employees okay so the maintenance and the sustainability firms can use technology attract human capital or tap into research and design networks to get access to information however employees can become disgruntled or unhappy and patents can expire so where is the firm sustainable competitive advantage then okay so it is by securing intellectual property rights so it is an intangible property 
owned by a firm in the forms of patents, copyrights, trademarks, or trade secrets. Okay? You could have a license, so you have to secure an inter intellectual property rights certificate. So by protecting a firm's uh, intellectual property, it requires a concerted effort on the part of the company. Effective protection of intellectual property is necessary before any investor will finance such an intricate undertaking. Intellectual property is characterized by significant development costs and very low marginal cost. So once developed, to the reproduction and distributions is included, okay, it might be one way or another, be almost zero. Okay. How to protect intellectual assets again? Through dynamic capabilities. And what is dynamic capabilities? It is a firm's capacity to build and protect a competitive advantage. So, which rests on knowledge, assets, and competencies. It also includes the complementary assets and technologies. Okay, so dynamic capabilities include the ability to sense and seize new opportunities, generate new knowledge, and recon uh, reconfiguring. Okay existing assets and capabilities okay so it may be one of the best way that the firm can protect its intellectual property so it is uh, related to the entrepreneurial side of the firm and they are built within a firm through its environmental and technological sensing apparat apparatus so uh, its choices of organizational form and collective ability to strategize. And I think uh, we all covered the usage of human capital and social capital and technology in uh, giving our company a sustainable competitive advantage so i would like to summarize that everything that we discussed so there is an important uh, growth of knowledge okay it is being coupled with the move okay by labor uh, markets to reward knowledge work okay and it tell us that investing in a company is in essence buying set of talents okay skills and ideas okay we have to invest in uh intelligent people good mannered people okay and not just by the physical and financial resources because remember sometimes when people are being intelligent they tend to become boastful they tend to forget to be respectful okay uh they said that those intelligent people okay the they keep on demanding okay they have a lot of demands okay and and sometimes they are really very confident about themselves themselves and they forget to respect other people so that could be some of the fallback of being intelligent but if we could be able to manage the knowledge, the skills, finding the right person with the right attitude, okay, definitely our company is in a competitive advantage position. Okay? So, company can utilize human capital to have a strategic position. Okay? But the question is, does the organization effectively attract and develop and retain the talent does the organization value the diversity secondly does the organization have positive personal and professional relationships among employees okay so do the social networks within the organization have the appropriate levels of closure and bridging relationship and lastly 
does the company use technology as a dynamic capacity or capabilities for competitive advantages? Okay. The bottom line is that the company should choose an intelligent people with high emotional conscience okay, so that the mind setting, the skills, and the behavior is balanced wherein the company could be able to influence and able to lead that uh, human capital uh, gearing towards uh, having a good harmonious relationship to other people and training them to use technology okay for having uh, a better retention of knowledge and uh, sustaining a harmonious relationship among others remember talented executives will always be in demand and will be able to attract substantial salary and remuneration packages in effect corporate power will be concentrated in the hands of the few what is critical in the firm of the future is not so much the core competencies as the core competence according to that is to jonas Riddle's trail a professor at the stockholm uh, school of economics so these walking monopolies will stay as long as the company can offer them something that they want when that is no longer the case they will leave we have to make our employee happy all the time if they are happy working with us okay they are going to work happily in our organization okay so i hope that you could able to understand how human capital how having good relationship how technology okay, can improve our company profile and can provide our company a sustainable competitive advantage okay so if you have any further question please let me know and i will be much willing to answer all of your queries this is your professor dr christine joy s simpao have a nice day everyone